What's up, guys? It is Monday, September 30th. Yes, I know. It's been a hot minute since we vlogged, but uh, not a lot of time to talk today, but we got a ton to get into, so let's roll that intro. Alright guys, so I know it's been a long time since we've uh, vlogged, so glad to be back. kind of want to just get you guys caught up on a few things. Um, one of the things that's kind of held me off from vlogging is the amount of work that I have on the back end here on my editing desk and trying to get caught up. I've had a, about two or three weeks off um, from my last actual wedding shoot, um, so I decided to take that time to actually work on getting caught up on my actual uh, wedding films. Uh, and while I haven't gotten actually caught up, I have been able to uh, release and deliver several weddings in this at this point in time. So I'm looking forward to continuing on and getting caught up all the way. Um, looks like I will have all of my work done by the end of November. That includes the ones that I, the weddings that I'm about to shoot coming up in the next couple weeks. So just trying to make do with as you know much time as I have, you know, while still juggling the 40-hour work week job. From the nine to five and then this on top of it so again i'm not looking for any pity or anything like that i'm just you know trying to you know make sure i got my priorities in line and i figured you know what it's been a while since we actually uh talked and vlogged so i wanted to catch you guys up on just a few things here so that where does that lead us uh so today i wanted to talk about something that really came up from when i was editing a couple days ago and you probably saw a facebook post um PSA kind of, if you will, about cameras and phones at weddings, specifically at the ceremony. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today is kind of highlight highlight that and then kind of take it a step further, kind of see if I could give you guys a little bit more of an illustration of what I'm seeing. Um, and as professionals, how do we handle this and how do we make our videos and our pictures stand out from the rest where we don't have, you know, we don't have to worry about picture, you know, cell phones and cameras in our frames and in our backgrounds and backdrops and things like that. Um, and that's really kind of what we, that, what, you know, sparked it was just real life, you know, a real life experience, right? So, um, and I'll talk about that, that exact experience that kind of sparked this whole, you know, thought process and this whole vlog uh, topic uh, here in a minute. But what I wanted to talk about is how do we prevent, you know, from a professional standpoint, right? Speaking to you, uh, photographers and videographers out there, how do we ensure that the cameras and the, the phones, specifically the phones, stay in the pockets and don't come out during the ceremony? How do we do that? Um, one of the things that I've been seeing lately, um, and is very popular, is signs. The brides will put together a sign, and it'll say, unplugged wedding, please put your cell phones away, or cell phone free wedding, enjoy the ceremony, blah, blah, blah. And they basically put the sign up at the front door, so when people walk in, they see it, like, oh, that's, okay, yeah, unplugged, that's great, fantastic. Um, and so, you know, the sign looks great. Does the sign work? In some instances, it does, right? In some cases, the sign does work. Um, usually when the sign is the last thing that someone sees right when they go into the ceremony, right? When they go in, they see the sign, they sit down and the ceremony starts, those people tend to keep their cell phones away. Um, what ends up happening is the people that, you know, come in, they sit, they see the sign, they're about 20, 25 minutes early, maybe 15 minutes early, they see a sign like, okay, I see. They sit down and they're like, Boom, it's in their hand. And they're, you know, they're sitting there, they're texting, or maybe they're, you know, messaging someone that's at the actual ceremony, and that's fine. But what we're trying to do is make sure that this is not in their hand when, when the ceremony starts, when you start taking pictures, when you start taking video, right? 
And what ends up happening is they're sitting there texting and they're like, yeah, mm hmm. Oh, hey, look, Uncle Bob is here. Uncle Bob's over there. Uncle Bob. Right? And they're, they're using this to communicate with Uncle Bob. And that's fine. Not against it at all. But what ends up happening is procession starts, person's got their phone and they got it like they're on it's on their lap or they're not looking at it and they're just they're in the moment they're looking at it, like oh, who's coming down and they go oh that's oh my god she is beautiful and now all of a sudden you've got I don't want to say every guest but there's usually like 10 to 20 percent of people that whip out their phones and they got it in portrait mode and they're taking pictures and video and I love the ones that are taking video like this like what are you gonna do with that video what are you gonna do with that video first of all that is not gonna look good on any TV that you have unless you're unless you're in IT and you've got a your monitors in portrait mode so those are the ones that are especially exciting is the ones that are you know like that you know, I have you know I've got some respect for the ones that have it in landscape mode. I've got some respect for you because at least you're holding your phone right. So anyway, so getting back to it, you know, the bride's walking down the aisle and they're taking pictures like this and video and stuff like that. How do we get around that? The sign didn't work. So here's my tip from professional to professional: talk with your bride ahead of time. Mention that you mention that you know bring up the fact that you're seeing an influx or you're seeing an uptick in people taking out their cell phones during ceremonies, even even with signs, right? Even with a sign that's posted at the front, back, wherever. You've got 15 signs, I've seen it all. People will still get their cell phones out. But I'll tell you what does work, is when you have your officiant come in and give a nice welcome speech, right? Welcomes everybody to the ceremony, bef right before the ceremony, right? So he walks in, he sits, he stands up at the front, he says, you know, he's got his little folder or whatever, and he can have it written down in front of him, just like kind of bullet points or whatever, you know? So and so, you know, bride and groom, insert uh, names here, wants to welcome you guys to their event. He's so, they're so glad that you guys were able to make it. Some of you have traveled from all over the state, all over the country to be here to enjoy their special day. And they want you to enjoy that day. They've also asked that we keep our cell phones put away. They've, they've hired professionals to capture, you know, pictures and video of their big day. We ask that you put your cell phones away. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the, the their one of their key moments of their lifetime when you're here. Right? They'll be more than happy to share the videos, they'll be more than happy to share the pictures online with you after all is said and done. But the bride and groom request that you keep your cell phones put away. And that's it. Cue the music, start the procession. Everyone's like, oh, they're really serious. I'm gonna put this away. And voila cell phones are gone. Now, you're probably still going to have, you know, one or two or three or four. You know, let's say you take, you know, that 15 to 20 percent and you drop it down to seven, nine percent. That's a significant drop. But at any case, the last thing that they hear, the reason why this works is more successful than the sign is because that's the last thing that they heard right before the wedding. Right? And that's the reason why signs work with people that walk in, sit down right before the actual ceremony. Those people don't tend to bring their phones out because they saw the sign and they're like, okay, right? Those are the people, they're, more, they're less likely to have their cell phone out. So this is my tip. And it's something that you don't want to spring on the bride the day of her ceremony, right? The day of their wedding, that's the last thing you want to do. This is something that you should talk to them about, you know, one of your pre-counseling you know, pre-meetings, you know, setting up timelines or whatever the case may be. That's something that you want to set up ahead of time. That way it gives her the time to talk with the officiant and set up something because you don't want him shooting from the hip. You want you want him to be confident, not and not stern, but you want him to be confident in what he's saying. So when uh, when you're talking with your bride and groom, this is something that you'll want to bring up. So I told you that I would tell you about the story that kind of sparked this whole this whole vlog idea. So, the ceremony that we were at, the venue that we were at, was kind of a narrow, you know, I'm going to paint the picture for you here. So, the, the, the venue was very narrow, right? There was probably about seven to six seats on each side. There was no aisle on the sides to kind of get around. You only had your center aisle where the procession was to kind of move up and down the actual venue. Their, their space at the front of the venue was not wide enough to have two people, a photographer and a videographer, 
was not wide enough for two people to shoot on the same side. So the photographer and I, that we are that we worked together, we decided that we were going to shoot, you know, shoot facing each other. And the problem with this is you're going to be in each other's shot. So we had a timeout. Okay, you're going to get your shot. Okay, you're going to back off, and I'm going to get my shot. Right, something similar to that. So we were very cognizant of what was going on around us. We still were in each other's shot from time to time, but it wasn't to the point where it was distracting. And that's the key thing here, right? Having having things happen around your focal point isn't a bad thing. But when it's taking away from the, the moment, the feel, you know, what the energy, what the emotions, like when it's taking away from that, that's when it becomes a problem. And that's where you separate your amateurs versus your professionals. So, so let's, so let's unpack what happened. So, you know, you've got center aisle, you've got some people kind of leaning in with their cell phones, which is okay. You know, you can kind of block them out, you know, by, uh, you know, cropping them out or whatever and moving in center frame. You obviously want to be very careful because you don't want to be right in the center because that's where the bride's coming down and the groom's looking down the center. So, you know, you kind of need to lean in and make the best shot you can. That wasn't the problem. So the problem arose, you know, you've got the bride, you've got the bride's father walking down the aisle, focus is perfect, you've got, you know, everything, you're following them coming down the aisle, everything's looking great, you kind of pan back, open up a little bit wider, and you see in the background you've got mom that's just out of focus, she's perfect, right, perfect, just out of focus, and she's got the tissue in hand, you can still see who it is, she's just dabbing her eyes because she's crying because she's so happy. Raw emotion happening right before your eyes and then and you have daughter father walk right in the frame you know father lifts the veil over and you can still see mom is trying to hold back the tears she's got she's got that she's got her uh, she has her handkerchief you know she's got her tissue clenched in her eyes she's holding back the tears dad goes in for a hug dad gives daughter kiss one last kiss before she goes off to be married Mom's back there, again, just trying to hold those to your back. You have so much raw emotion happening right in front of you, right? And what's happening in the background? Right behind the mom, right where the emotion started at this whole little scene, right? Right behind mom. Of course, like I said, mom's just out of focus. You've got a white background that shows, that's that got a nice contrast of what's happening in, fo in the foreground. And you have Uncle Joe, touchdown videotaping the whole thing just like this right not watching what's going on in front of him looking up so you got the up the nose shot you got the touchdown hands you got the phone in the air black phone white background just going like this right just following everything right behind mom mom has a halo of touchdown Uncle Joe holding the phone up right over her head. Now I'm not going to say it completely destroys the emotional connection that you're making with your audience, but it's not helping, right? It's just not helping. And people, you know, people say, "Oh, well, you're the professional. You should you should take take care of that. You should be able to crop that out or you should be able to, you know, get him out of there." And while with a photo, yes. You could probably do that. You could probably, you know, clone stamp the background over top of them, and now you've got, hopefully, you know, you can, you know, you don't have a, you know, half of a body or anything like that. That's a possibility, right? Video is a little bit more difficult, especially, you know, you kind of got a moving frame, you know, you're pulling focus from, you know, the people in front of you, the bride and the bride's father, to pushing focus over to the mother who's, you know, dabbing your eyes, you know, there's a lot that goes into that, and so and some people are like, oh well, you just go over there and tell them. Go over there and tell them, you know. And people will say like, oh, well, I really wish people would keep their phones put away because having phones in my shots is a really pain in the butt. And their and like their perception is, you know, the person standing in front of you is holding their phone up, taking pictures, right? Taking pictures, and you can just say. I don't mind that. I'll do that all day. But when you've got the procession happening right in front of you, you can't just say, 
Hold up. Hey, put your phone away. All right, please continue. You can't do that. That's not, you just can't. That's not a possibility. So, you know, the whole pushback and people say, oh, you're the professional. You have to, like, that, that argument doesn't hold water, right? Because I can't go around and say, okay, you got to put your phone away, put your phone away, put your phone away before the whole ceremony. I'll be, I'll say that, I'll be saying that all morning and I'll just tell I'm blue in the face. That's not, that's, that, that, that argument doesn't hold water. So that's why I recommend speaking to the bride, talking to the officiant, trying to get them involved with some type of welcome speech or something. And at the very tail end of that, put your cell phones away. Maybe not quite so blunt, but in a no more elegant type of way. There's a couple last things I wanted to talk about real quick uh, before we uh, close out this vlog, uh, just because there's been a lot happening on the past couple of weeks, and I wanted to get you guys up to kind of up to speed. So um, I made a couple purchases. We finally, finally got a processor for the computer, and you'll notice I got it. I had to sit sitting here all day, the whole time, but. Anyway, so we finally got a processor. Um, I had to, um, I had to kind of loosen up a little bit on what I wanted to get because the 3900X just wasn't available for uh, MSRP, um, and I wasn't about to pay about double or one and a half times for it. Um, just, it's just not in the cards. Like I can't bring myself to do that. So uh, we went ahead and got a 3700X. Um, still, obviously, still with AMD's processor is going to work just as well. Um, not nearly as many cores or threads, still an upgrade from what we have. And um, so this is the final piece that we were kind of looking for for our build. Um, so kind of get you guys up to speed there. So although with that being said, the money that we saved from purchasing this versus the 3900X, I was able to pick up a few extra things, uh, namely one, a new mouse. So this is the Logitech MX Master S2. Um, excuse me, 2S. I always get that mixed up. Um, just an all-around great mouse. Um, I I actually kind of broke down and already opened it and started using it with my older my old PC. Um, this uh, comes off recommendation of Scott McKenna and a few other videographers that you know kind of use this mouse as the, kind of like a workflow type of uh, tool. So we also picked up. Uh, so we also picked up a new keyboard. Uh, this is the Corsair K68 RGB. Uh, it's a full keyboard, uh, so it's got the full set plus the nine keys on the side, or I guess it's the plus 10 key, I guess is what they call it. Um, it's full RGB uh, per key, so you can change like different settings and stuff like that. This was kind of, um, it's got Cherry MX switches. This is kind of a, uh, a little bit more of a purchase for me, um, not necessarily like a, um, uh, production standpoint but something I was you know I've always wanted kind of a more higher end uh, keyboard the one I've been using was a Logitech keyboard wireless mouse and keyboard combo which has been great love it and that's one of the reasons why I stuck with Logitech is you know because I trust their their products just a fantastic product um, but I really kind of wanted to try it out and just couldn't resist it was on a great deal so um, I was able to pick up the keyboard and the mouse for the same price that I was going to spend on the actual processor, the 3900X. So being able to save those two, that that little bit of money and pick up some peripherals that I was looking for. Um, with that being said, I am going to go ahead um, and release um, a build video uh, series for you guys. Um, it's going to be broken up into three videos. The first one is going to talk about the parts for the actual build itself, kind of go into a little bit, I don't want to say in-depth, you know, analysis, but it's going to go over the, the new parts, compare some of the new parts to the old parts um, that are currently being used in my rig, and um, just kind of highlight what's going to be going into this actual build. So that's going to be the first video. The second video is going to be um, a actual build video, uh, so you'll see me and special guest uh, actually constructing and putting together the actual build firing it up for the first time and kind of giving an initial reaction, initial um, uh, overview, I guess is what you'd call it. And then the third video is going to be kind of like a follow-up video. That's probably going to be, I would probably say maybe three, maybe four weeks later um, after I've had a chance to edit, play some games on it, you know, rendering, stuff like that, run it through its paces for what I use it for. Now, I say gaming loosely, 
So the system itself is actually going to be used about 25% for gaming and 75% for actual work. Um, that percentage might vary depending on the time of year and the you know stuff like that. But that's kind of the breakdown that I went for. So the different parts we picked went more so on the workflow end of things versus the gaming side. So, um, but uh, we break down why we chose certain things and you know the color aesthetic and like what we were going for as far as you know the overall feel of the build and some upgrade paths later on down the line. So keep an eye out for those videos coming out very very soon. So the other videos to look forward to and kind of the last update that I had for you guys is our upgrade series. That's the series, that's the actual videos where I take and bring out, you know, a certain piece of equipment that I started with or the current piece of equipment that I'm using and show you the piece of equipment that I upgraded to. That's going to be something that's coming out later on uh, in the, this month uh, in October. Um, again, something that I've really been looking forward to and just showing you guys when I've and I practice what I preach. You know, you use a piece of equipment until you can't use it anymore. Um, so we're going to be talking about why I make those upgrades, prices, and you know, should you just instead go with the the budget friendly one and jump right into the expensive one? Kind of give those pros and cons. We'll be breaking those down for you guys in an upcoming video. So again, keep your eyes out on the channel. If you're not subscribed, I'd consider getting subscribed if you find those topics interesting. We're going to be starting the daily vlog back up here again. So we will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you again so much for watching. Really, really do appreciate it. And uh, like I said, see you guys tomorrow.